G'day and welcome to another episode of Ian Smithson's Photography. This week we're looking at creativity challenge number 17, recovery. And I've come up to the back of Y River on the Great Ocean Road in Victoria to look at the forest to see how well it's recovered since the bushfires of just before Christmas in 2016. So it's been about 18 months and I want to have a close look at how well the forest has recovered. Not just the trees, but the undergrowth. So let's have a look and see how we go. So what I'm trying to capture here as a starting point is one shot with different examples of the trees that have been burnt in this forest. The dominant subject here that I've placed just on that left hand third is a very large blackened tree trunk. But behind that on the left hand side I have two other vertical tree trunks that are smaller, one of which is a dead tree, the second of which is recovering quite well. The bark obviously wasn't burnt as badly and there's lots of new growth coming off there. And on the right hand side I have a smaller old dead tree trunk and then some other trunks behind that. So you'll also notice that I have a very bright sky behind this. And so I'm going to bracket this shot two stops under to two stops over so that I can merge those later on to bring out the highlights in the sky but not lose the detail in the darks in the tree trunks. So we'll give that a go. Okay, for the setup, I've switched to manual focus. I'm going to switch the ISO to 100. F11 should give me enough depth of field from the shrubs just in front of this large black trunk all the way through to infinity in the background. And I'm going to set this to bracketing, multi-frame with the two second timer, minus two to plus two exposure values. And just let that go and wait for it to fire off. And then I need to check on the back of the screen to make sure that everything is in focus and those tree trunks in the foreground are in focus. And if I slide over into the background, the tree trunks and the leaves are in focus there. And then I need to check each of the five exposures to make sure that I have enough detail in the sky and there's nothing blown out and that looks okay. And then the last exposure with more than enough detail in the darks in the foreground. And so that looks okay. But now what I've noticed in terms of framing is that I've set it up and I just have a little branch and a trunk coming in just on the left hand side. And that just looks weird. So I'm going to slightly zoom in. I obviously have two choices. I can zoom in which will crop that a little bit or I can just reframe by panning a little bit to the side but I really like the setup with this large trunk where it is. I don't want to pan across to uh, remove that little bit of distraction on the outside so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and that's now gone and now set that and run it again. and that looks better. Mm -hmm. 
So I really like this burnt log, which is about a metre and a half off the ground. It's a bit difficult to tell where it is here, but I like that really thick black line uh, diagonally across the screen with the green foliage indicating the death of a tree, but the recovery of the background. So I'm going to take a few shots here. I'm going to try different apertures to see if I can blur out the background, but then also a narrow aperture to get a real depth of field in the background. And because I'm so close to this log, I'm also going to try and focus stack where I focus on the log in the first place and then on the background for the second shot and stack those together to see which result gives me uh, the most pleasing image. So we'll give that a go. One last shot with a beautiful view of Kennet River in the background. I'm shooting here over to the northwest where it's, there's just a mass of tree trunks from old dead ones, blackened by fire, some not blackened by fire, some with new growth coming uh, and some new trees that have popped up in the foreground. And so this one's really an abstract shot. The challenge is to try and find a composition where you get enough mixture of lines in there to make it look interesting without it just being chaos. So I'm going to try a few different ones. Uh, it might be a panorama across, it might just be a single shot, but uh, we'll give a few shots a go. I don't think I'm going to have to bracket, but I always do anyway. Um, but I may end up just choosing one shot rather than blending. I tend to bracket anyway, most of the time, uh, because pixels are free. So take the shots in the field that you might need later. You don't want to get back there later and go, oh, if only I had an extra two stops of light in that one. So take what you need in the field and just delete them when you get back to the lab. So let's have a go. All right, I'm shooting uh, at, as you can see here, just on a little ridge on the side of a four-wheel drive track. And I can't get up much higher without getting further away. I want to get, pick out some of the detail in here. So I'm going to change lenses, which means I walk back to the car uh, to get the 70 to 200 so I can pick out some of the detail because 70 millimeters on the 24 to 70 here just isn't close in enough. I'm just getting too much crap and chaos in it. So I'll be back in a minute with a new lens and see how we go. I hadn't found exactly the shot that I was looking for, but late in the afternoon, further down the track, I found a location that gave me more of the contrast between light and dark and dead and new. And so I took a couple of shots, one that I converted to black and white. Tell me what you think in the comments below. <laughs> 